Hi, I'm Daz. I'm the producer of The Drift, uh, and uh, we're still moving forward uh, very nicely uh, on two fronts at the moment. One is uh, visual effects. We've got John behind me, who's uh, working on the on the effects. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. And the other side uh, is on sound. Um, the big thing that's happened on the sound side is that uh, we've now upgraded the sound mix from a stereo soundtrack to a 5.1. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure what we're going to call it. It's not Dolby or, or uh, whatever you, but it's, it's a 5.1 surround. So that's a centre speaker, um, the front uh, left and right speakers, uh, a rear left and right, uh, and a subwoofer. And um, it's taken take quite a while just to sort of just swap it over. Um, and what we've done already is um, separate some of the, the more distinct sounds. So for those of you who know about 5.1, you already know about this sort of thing, but for those of you who don't, typically um, the voices generally sit in the centre speaker in the front left and right. Um, and this, of course, you want a specific type of effect, in which case it would, it would come all over the place. Score is more spatial, so that's generally the left and right speaker, and a bit at the back sometimes, again, depending on what the emphasis is at the time. And the same with sound effects. can be completely directional, can be one corner of the room, um, or fly around the room, or whatever. So, um, currently the setup, um, what the setup show was stereo, so simply um, by transferring it across hasn't made a massive difference other than that we've been able to we separated already, in fact, before we did stereo, I'd already separated, the, the dialogue was one set of audio tracks and then the sound effects was another set of audio tracks, the background, um, so like, you know, rumbling of a ship or something, and that was another set of tracks, um, and the score was a separate one as well. So when we moved across to 5.1, it was relatively simple, immediately, for example, just to put um, the voices onto uh, a voice track. So um, now what I need to do is go back and look at all of the others. Um, and the last bit on that is the um, the, the subwoofer, the LFE, um, low frequency um, enhancement or whatever it's called, where you can have a specific sort of bassy noise, um, and they're a sort of separate channel as well. So um, that's good. It's it's made my workload uh, go up a lot, um, or will do, because now I've got to start thinking about where I want the sound to be. Let's say most of it is general standard standard front of uh, you know, front speakers and stuff. Um, just looking at where you want things to happen behind you and, and doing it right, because if you do too much going around the back or something they can become distracting so it's it's you know it's a whole new audio world for us on that so that's um very exciting um and then on the visual effects side um as i said john's here and we're now sort of um we every we kind of sort of feel that we're getting really close to starting to render lots of shots and then we find something that's sort of stops us but when we solve that particular problem and it's normally a look and feel problem it kind of sets up the tone for the rem for all of the shots. So although we're having to sort of jump those hurdles at this point, it, it allows us, um, it smooths away sort of later on. Um, and what we're doing at the moment is we're, we're choosing a particular shot in the movie um, that we quite like, which has a variety of um, feel, a variety of feel about it. It starts off with the deliverance flying in one position, um, it flies past the camera and ends up in another position and uh, the lighting changes in that sequence. Um, the engines have to do something in that sequence and the position of the ship changes as well. So there's all sorts of movement going on um, and there's a variety of spaces in the background too. So the idea now, um, what we'll be doing this weekend is, is to say, right, well, let's, let's make this shot finish. Let's finish this shot um, as best we can. And that way we've already come across quite a few hurdles that we know are going to come up elsewhere. So one of them, for example, was the lighting of the, the ship. Another one was um, the textures and how shiny they are and how shiny we want them to be and um, what the impact is of having something that might be too shiny and how it reflects the, the, the light. Um, other things that came up was the, uh, the engine um, themselves, how they look, um, how they're going to direct their flames or whatever it is that's going to come out the back and how often it's going to happen. You know, is it on all the time? Is it going to be bursts? Is it going to be something in between? How big is the flame going to be? Um, and these are things that will come up in other shots as well. But because it's in this shot, we're now obviously dealing with that hurdle now. So that's um, slowing things down for this particular shot, but hopefully will then, say, smooth the way, speed things up later on. So that's... Um, of value and we're still sort of banging our heads when I say our heads I just sort of say pointless things and then John has to turn that into something that's marginally helpful which doesn't uh, often happen because I normally just ask the impossible and then from that uh, he then turns that into something that's actually um, doable uh, and then 
we get that off to the render farm. And what we're doing is, um, to not to save time, but to try and be clever about it, um, is we don't render the whole shot. What we do is we render certain frames. So we render the, we render the first frame, the last frame, and then um, any point in the shot that we think we need to absolutely check. So it could be anything from, to say, three or four frames to, to ten frames, depending on what's going on. And that still takes a lot less time uh, than waiting to render an entire... Well, this shot, I think, is around about 15 seconds. So, um, uh, well, slightly less, about 12 seconds. So that's a long time. Um, now, if it's taking eight to ten minutes a frame, then there you go. That's going to take a fair old while for it to render. We won't find out till tomorrow, if not the day after, if it worked. Whereas you render a frame at a time, um, then obviously it, it uh, takes a lot less time. And the other thing, of course, is that when we start getting to the, the flow of this, we've also got other machines that we can render off this machine. So once it's all good to go, we can then push this away from John's computer, from the render farm, to, from him to the render farm. And then that will um, be working in the background, which we can monitor, and then John can be working on the next shot. And once he's done that, he'll push that to the render farm and, and so on. So um, it's good. So it's, it's kind of, every sort of few hours, it feels like we were just about to really go for it, and then something happens and stops us. But at the same time, we're recognising that we're looking, for, we're looking for problems deliberately. We're looking to see what's going to go wrong. And if we deal with it now, hopefully... It'll uh, it'll make life easier later on. So there we go. So yeah, it's been good. Um, surround sounds sounding pretty cool. The the visual effects themselves, some of the texturing and that we've we've amended. We've found a few sort of hot spots or either bits that are too shiny or too bright. And they're kind of the eye is is sort of um, being drawn to that in the shot. So it's nice sort of dark and smoky. You know, graveyard of spaceships, and then it's like it, like someone's got a little torch in the corner and sort of just waving it about or something, and the eye is being drawn to that, and you're missing, you know, the rest of what's going on in the shot, um, or you, you know, you're, not, you're just not looking, you're focusing on the more, the brightness. So those have had to be taken out, but um, that was yesterday, and then today, working on this particular shot with those already done, when John set up those frames. Uh, to look at, you know, almost immediately they were looking really good. So that's paid off straight away. So that's smoothed away for this particular shot. So yeah, it's uh, it's good. Um, got a day or so more to go for this one, and then John's going to disappear and then we're back uh, in a few weeks' time, and then we're really going to crack on uh, with a few more shots. So uh, there we are, all good.